Today I'm checking out Pray Say Part 2. Now if you want to see Part 1, just check in the description down below. I'll have the link for Part 1 down there. Um, Vox and the Void did a two-parter for this. This is about a Night Lord who, in my opinion, reflects... If you could call it the best, then he reflects the best of what Conrad Curse had to offer. Now, Conrad Curse is one of my favorite Primarchs, but the Night Lords were fundamentally just screwed up in a lot of ways. Mainly because of their Primarch, and there's nothing there's nothing that can be done for it. Um, he's standing up in this story, and if you have not watched the first one, then please stop this video and click down the link below. Um, he's standing up for the way his warband should be. He f and I've been really enjoying it so far. Everything by Vox the Void, uh, everything by Vox the Void is good. This was written by Tom Townsend, and he is portraying Night Lords the way I think they should be portrayed, where they have some sort of integrity. There's some, some sort of code of honor. <sighs> They're not supposed to be just brutal killers. They're supposed to be something more than that. Because um, without any kind of depth, all you're left with is a big, oh, big scary bad guy. And I like it when villains actually have depth. Because make no mistake, the protagonist of this is a horrible person is an absolutely horrible person but they have a code of ethics that they live by and this has been challenged and he's no longer willing to accept it so summary out of the way we're going to get started with this Th thank you everyone that wanted to see this i was going to be watching anyway as fox in the void here we go <coughs> Pellets Vaca roared as he closed at last with his hated foe. Captain Tyrassius's broadsword blazing like a purifying firebrand in his left hand, as if the weapon's machine spirit was just as eager to spill the Chaos Marine's tainted blood as he was. Haranzar responded in kind, his inhuman eyes alight with the promise of victory. The demon sword Soul Reaver, wreathed in an insidious miasma of hunger mm. and death. The courtyard lit up as the two blades clashed in an outpouring of conflicting energies. Battle stimulants and combat hormones burned through the Night Lord's bloodstream as he gave himself wholly over to the destruction of his nemesis. His ennui vanished, and a terrible, all-devouring joy arose to take its place. A joy he had briefly reveled in during his duel with the Howling Griffin. Mm. The joy of a being created solely for war, finding an opponent worthy of his prowess. The two gene-forged demigods whirled about the funeral pyre, trading blows that would have broken the bodies of any human. Their swords and claws are blur, yet there was a profound difference in their objectives. Zar strove to cripple and subdue. Svaka fought exclusively to kill. <laughs> the sorcerer's forced talons tore great rents in the Night Lord's armor, steadily sapping his strength with each fresh wound. While Svaka struggled to breach Zar's defenses and land a decisive mortal blow, the Night Lord paid no heed to his injuries and instead devoted the whole of his focus to exploiting any lapse in the Chaos Marine's judgment. He began to decrease the vigor of his attacks, allowing Zar to believe he had the upper hand even as his own blood continued to flow. Sensing his prey weakening, Zar pressed his advantage forcing Svaka to go on the defensive and driving him up against the base of the pyre in a shower of sparks. Their swords locked, and once more Zar's slavering jaws hovered mere inches from the Night Lord's sweat-streaked face, mm. the glistening flesh of his exposed musculature pulsating with unholy vitality. Blade to blade, eye to eye, just as you desired. The Chaos Marine taunted as Svaka managed to block the sorcerer's questing talons with his own lightning claws at the last second to keep from being disemboweled. Mm. If battle remains the only action left that brings you joy, then why not kill for the eternal glory of Khorne? The Blood God might yet endow you with the power to triumph over me this night. 
If you are worthy enough to call upon him for strength. What the gods give with their right hand, they take with their left. Svaka snarled see what I'm as saying? he marshaled his strength and thrust the librarian back several paces. You're just a slave, Czar. A mere plaything to the abominations you so ardently worship. Mm. You style yourself as Thalek's invaluable advisor, when you're not even worthy to clean the gore from his armor. Though, perhaps if you'd been born a dog, you could have earned a place at his side by licking the blood from his boots. <laughs> Zara howled in outrage and lunged at him, his eyes aflame with utter hatred. The numbing cold speared into Svaka's body and enveloped his limbs once more, retarding his reflexes. This time he was not quick enough to parry the sword. I got, I got told that this was not going to end well, and of course it's 40k, but I want Svaka to kill this guy. For his blows, blinding agony ripped through his arm as Soul Reaver severed his left hand at the wrist. Tyrassius' broadsword struck the ground with a fateful clatter of steel on stone. That sucks. Streaks of white flashed across Svaka's vision, and he gasped aloud as Zar drove his forced talons into his stomach and twisted them. Now you will suffer the torments of the damned, tell it. Now the Damn gods it. shall have their due. The Chaos Marine wrenched the talons free, and the Night Lord fell to his knees as a cascade of blood drenched his groin and thighs. Zar sheathed the demon sword and gripped him by the rim of his gorget. Svaka tried to bring his lightning claws to bear, but his arm was leaden, and he no longer possessed the strength to wield the blades. The Psyka loomed over him now, now seemingly grown massive and monstrous, as he channeled the raw energies of the Immaterium into his corporeal form. Svaka was dragged to his feet, as if he weighed nothing. The runes adorning the sorcerer's horns flared to golden life, the ruinous symbols and sigils pulsing with infernal power. Haran Zar lowered his head. He opened his dripping jaws. I knew it wasn't going to end well. <laughs> it's 40k. It can always get worse. And kept on opening them. Wider and wider they yawned, until they gaped wide enough to swallow the Night Lord whole. Hell awaited within. Svaka beheld an endless roiling landscape of elemental insanity. That's kind of disgusting. A writhing sea of unspeakable colors, impossible geometries, screaming souls and ravenous ever-shifting neverborn. Eternal and unconquerable, the warp seethed in anticipation. A million eyes gazed hungrily upon Svaka, and a million mouths whispered his name in welcome. It hardly mattered if what he was witnessing was real or a psychic projection conjured within his mind. Madness beckoned. Damnation loomed. Clawed fingers and barbed tentacles seized his limbs as a host of demons swarmed about him and dragged him to a high altar formed of fused bones and melted flesh. Resistance was futile. The sacrifice would be carried out. The ruinous powers would be appeased. Thalak would ascend become something unrecognizable to his brethren. It was inevitable. He had failed, and the price of failure was. My lord! Svaka's eyes snapped open. He gasped for breath. The reality of the courtyard reasserted itself in a bedlam of noise and violence. Bolters barked. Chainblade screamed. He was on his knees again, his lower extremities bathed in blood. Shazar was at his side, hammering the butt of her Laz pistol against his pauldron in an attempt to rouse him. <laughs> Before him a scene of chaos unfolded, an alternate vision of madness. Haran Zar roared and raged as he lashed out with both sword and sorcery as the Night Lords of Vath's Talon attacked him on all sides. Dark gouts of his blood spread nice. across his assailant's midnight blue armor as their revved chain blades tore into his body. One of Zar's horns had been shaved nice. off, and a portion of his lower jaw had been blasted clean away. <laughs> a Night Lord had already perished, brutally bisected from collarbone to hip. Fell lightning arced from the tines of the sorcerer's force talons, enveloping two more legionaries in multicolored mm -hmm. witch fire as Soul Reaver parried the blows of Vat's enormous eviscerator. The Talon Master was fighting with all the fury of a world eater berserker, 
ancient Nostrum and death curses blaring from his Vox amplifiers at maximum <laughs> volume. His jackal-jawed helm appearing to grin as the Psyker's blood spattered across his visor. Stay low and find cover, Svaka said to Shazar as she backed away from him. Free of the crippling cold, he leapt to his feet and hurled himself into the fray, heedless nice. of his wounds. One of the Night Lords engulfed by Zar's witchfire convulsed and collapsed as his blood was transmuted into pure Prometheum. The second Ow. fell screaming, ebony spikes erupting from his spine and skull as his skeletal system underwent catastrophic mutation. Svaka sprang over his stricken brother, even as Zar turned his full attention upon Vath. Soul Reaver glowing with an ethereal, otherworldly warp light. The Talon Master struck again, and as the two swords met, the light coalesced around the Eviscerator, and it exploded like a crack grenade. The force of its destruction blowing Vath backwards into the pyre <coughs> and sending dislodged chain teeth wickering through. This is really good. Through the air like shards of deadly shrapnel. One projectile took out Svaka's right eye before he hit Zar with all the force of a charging amble. The crackling blades of his lightning claw punching through ceramite and carapace nice. to pierce the sorcerer's twin hearts. Die! Svaka screamed, putting all his remaining strength into the strike. Die and be damned! Thalak will never belong to your gods! Are they? Dominus! Nox! <laughs> Yet even as his life was extinguished, the Psyker assailed Svaka's mind again. And this time, it was not visions of the warp that caused the Night Lord to stagger. It was the memories. Memories of another world, of another life. Svaka fell, dragging the dying Chaos Marine down with him, no longer aware of where he was or why he was fighting, for he was no longer a legionary. No longer a Night Lord. He was. He is mortal once more. Weak. Help. Hmm. Well, my lamp just went out. It happens. Helpless. Pathetic. A pale, skinny nine year old boy clothed in filth. Oh my god, that was just really weird timing. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Nope. He rags, nope. running as fast as his legs can carry him. I've seen this horror movie. Give me a second. Nope. 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 You're coming on or I'm leaving. There we go. Yep. Yep. We don't mess with that here. Nope. Nope. I'm not that one. His single human heart pounding in his ears. His lungs burning with exertion as he flees from the vicious pack of savage gangers. The stolen, half-roasted dog leg clutched tightly in his hand. Hunger gnaws like a sump rat at his empty stomach, even as terror blinds him reducing him to the mental state of a panicked prey animal. His pursuers shout and whoop as they swiftly close behind him. Svaka runs on, splashing through stagnant puddles before he slips and falls with a cry amongst the piles of trash choking the dark, dingy alleyway, the leg bone flying from his grasp. The gangers swiftly surround him, laughing and jeering. Their teeth are filed into points and their red-painted knives are drawn for the kill. Ladies and gentlemen, Nostromo. Svaka kicks and thrashes uselessly as two of them drag him to his feet and slam him up against a rockcrete wall. The older boys smirk and jostle each other as they debate on what they should do to him. Slit open his belly and tear out his guts, <laughs> cries one ganger whose right eye is encircled by a starburst tattoo. Cut off his fingers one by one and stuff them down his throat. Well, Yells he could, another he boy get something with to steel eat. studs protruding from his lips and cheeks. Flay him alive, just like the Night Hunter used to do. Snarls a third, his sharpened teeth capped in tarnished silver. Then the leader steps forward. Svaka struggles helplessly against his captors, his fear all but choking him. 
The gang boss of the Red Knives is well muscled, and his shaved scalp is inked with intricate nostrum and script. He wears a black, synth leather long coat, and a ruby gemstone is set into the pommel of his dagger. Blinking languidly, he looks Faka up and down, assessing him like fresh meat upon the butcher's block. You're a bold little gutterette to be stealing food from the mouths of my mates, he says at length, sounding more amused than angry. Svaka is too terrified to respond. And you run fast too, for such a scrawny brat. The hmm. gang boss continues, looking thoughtful. Then he turns to his followers. What do you say, Red Knives? Should we repaint our blades with his blood? Or should we find some other use for him? He's just some whore's nimble-fingered bastard, Hazak. Less than dirt. I'm sorry, you're on Nostromo. That could be half of you. Let's kill him now, and then we'll have something better than dog to eat. The boy with that the starburst that tattoo happen. licks his lips as he speaks, his own hunger evident in his eyes. Nah, we do good to sell him to Krask. Everyone knows Krask's clients pay top coin for kids his age. Then we can buy up a few of those nice new needle rifles Visar's got stashed away in the Southern Warehouse District. The silver-toothed ganger grins at the thought of acquiring the weapons at Svaka's expense and winks at him. No, we should let him join us. A clear, youthful voice calls out from the back of the crowd. The gangers murmur in surprise and shift aside as a boy pushes his way past them. A boy only a few years older than Svaka himself. The young ganger's face, though scarred, is bereft of tattoos, and his lank, black hair looks as if it has never once been cut. The butcher's blade he holds in his right hand is unpainted. He is obviously a new blood, mm. an aspiring red knife who hasn't yet been properly bloodied in a turf war to earn the right to be marked with the signature gang tattoos displayed by his comrades. Still, he radiates a quiet lethality, and his eyes are devoid of fear as he comes to stand before his leader. What? Are you tired of being the runt of the pack, Thalak? <laughs> Hazak asks condescendingly, tapping the flat of his dagger against the boy's pallid cheek. Are you lonely? Or are you just sick of doing all the low jobs by yourself? The Red Knives need new members, Thalak informs him simply, ignoring the threatening blade. Both Hesper and Zeit were killed three days ago, and Falaz is dying of that gut wound. The Shadow Skulls and the Gore Feeders claim more of our territory each month. Soon we'll be scattered and hunted down like crippled dogs. The street brat is fast and clever. We could use him. We could teach him how to cut and kill, too. I... Yeah, this is... Yeah. Could teach him. If no one else wants to, then we could at least pretend we have a future. And yes, I am tired of being the runt of the pack. <laughs> Hasek throws back his head and barks a laugh. By terror! <laughs> You've got quite a pair on you, Thalak. I'll give you that much. He motions to the two gangers pinning Svaka to the wall, and they throw him to the ground at Thalak's feet. Did you hear that gutter rat? Your life has taken a new turn. You're going to become a red knife and put those nifty fingers of yours to good use. Otherwise, I'll personally skin you alive for daring to steal our prey. There you Understand, go. new blood? Svaka stares up at Thalak in astonishment, feeling something that might be hope flare up in his heart. Hope's the first step of the disappointment. The long boy smiles down at him. It is not a smile of arrogance or cruelty or even of triumph. It is an open, guileless smile that hints at a future bond that will exist solely between the two of them. A bond that, unbeknownst to either boy, is destined to last for millennia, long after the Red Knives, Murder Gang and the Night World of Nostramo had both ceased to exist. Yes, Svaka says, his voice barely above a whisper. Thalek extends his free hand, his smile widening. He grips Svaka's bony wrist firmly, 
helping him to stand. Yes, his abyssal eyes affirm. Mm. Telid Svacker came to himself in agonizing increments as his disjointed thoughts slowly coalesced and his mind dragged itself free of the entangling shadows of his half-remembered past life. The Night Lord opened his good eye. Shazar's concerned face immediately swam into view. The old thrall was crouched by his head, carefully cleaning the dried blood from his face with a strip of cloth torn from her cloak and dampened with water from her canteen. She grinned tentatively as he focused on her, pulling back her scarified lips to reveal the few yellow teeth she still possessed. Another good fight, Lord, she whispered gently, as if trying to comfort him. Huh. Better than the first one, I think. The rhino rocked gently as it crunched over a mound of rubble. Svaka lifted his head and looked about him, struggling to stay conscious through a haze of pain and fatigue. He had been stripped of his armor and was lying on his back on the floor of the transport. Vath was seated on his left, along with the four surviving members of his squad, one of whom flexed his spiked gauntlets warningly to discourage Svaka from rising. The Talon Master's warplate was scorched, and his gorget and chestplate had been split open by the explosive destruction of his eviscerator. Blood was pooled at his feet, and both of his eye lenses were cracked. The crimson malevolence doled. Still, he grinned his jackal skull grin, indifferent to the seriousness of his injuries. Tyrassius's broadsword was planted upright before him, and the Night Lord's armored fingers gripped the hilt with a fierce possessiveness. Svaka raised his left arm and examined the stump of his severed hand, a thick, dark scab of clotted Laraman cells now encrusted the end of his wrist. He then risked a glance at his stomach and immediately regretted it. Nah, yeah, you're screwed up. The rhino's interior lighting, dim as it was, served only to accentuate the gruesome sight of his exposed entrails. Yeah, you're screwed up. That sword is still mine, Vath. He gasped, <laughs> his voice thick and garbled with congealed blood. Vath emitted a harsh, pain-filled noise that might have been a chuckle. Don't fret now. If Thalak lets you live, I promise I'll give it right back. You will? No, of course not. <laughs> You'll have to fight me for it. Svaka smiled as his eye flickered shut again. Good. Now I have something to look forward to. Vath's voice grew somber. You know how this is going to end, Telid. Thalak is not going to take the loss of his pet sorcerer lightly. No, he's not. Death will be slow in coming, and you may yet beg for it before he is satisfied. Svaka coughed violently and tasted fresh blood on his tongue. That doesn't matter. Haranza would have seen us all reduced to fanatical midnight-clad word-bearers had I not acted. Besides... Captain Thalak is free now, even if he doesn't realize or accept it. We freed him, Vath. Together, we freed the entire warband. And I thought, this I thought is... I was the only legionary who cared. We are Night Lords, brother. Vath sounded resigned, mm. almost remorseful. You know we cannot afford to care. Caring is a weakness, and weakness is the only true sin in this cruel, uncaring galaxy. The ancient memory resurfaced in Svaka's mind again. Thalak as a boy, smiling with genuine warmth as he extends his hand to help a thieving Gutterat who had earned nothing but death for his weakness. I should have died a long time ago, the Night Lord whispered raggedly, as Shazar began to weep once more. We all should have died a long time ago. Vath did not answer. The rhino rumbled on Around them, the capital city of Sychanthus III burned. Night had come. A night that would never truly end. A night that held no promise of a dawn. Ravaged in mind and body, Telid Svaka sank unresistingly back into its black embrace. 
his final act of service to the Eighth Legion completed. The soothing darkness cradled Conrad Kurz's faithful son, drawing him deeper and deeper into its fathomless depths, and... He stands next to Thalek, on the crumbling terrace of a dilapidated habspire, within sight of Nostramo Quintus's vast spaceport, watching as ships, shuttles and lifters of every description travel in an endless brilliantly lit procession from the surface to the orbital dockyards high above oh and back again. The sight is breathtaking, and for a few minutes the two boys forget the incessant hunger gnawing at their bellies. Then Thalek turns to Svaka, his dark eyes bright with some inner fire, his smile as open and guileless as it had been on the night he'd saved Svaka and changed his fate. He gestures eagerly at the spaceport with his freshly painted red butcher knife and speaks the words that will see them both damned in ways they cannot even begin to comprehend. I'm going to join the Legion, Tellard. Come with me. We'll escape this hellhole together. Forever. Let's go to the stars. Let's fight in the Great Crusade and become mighty heroes of the Emperor. A choice is set before him. Svaka does not hesitate. Nor does he question Thalek's decision. He does not consider the risks or the consequences or even the possibility of failure. Instead, he simply smiles back at his friend, his only friend, and nods his head. Yes, he says, his soft voice barely above a whisper. And the thirsting gods laughed. Oh, God! Why can't GW write villain characters like this? Why can't this be done? I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Because Svaka is in no way a good person. Neither is his captain. They're both horrible people. But why can't we get motivations like these? Um, This was outstanding the entire story all the way through um the origin story this sudden flashback to an origin story you start to realize why he's doing what he's doing it's because he got saved all those years ago and he's paying back a debt that he feels like he owes this was outstandingly done from the start to the finish extremely well written and well spoken. So, um, every once in a while, I just sit there, I listen to something that, like, just makes me sit there and realize just sometimes how badly we need characters of depth in this, in that we can relate to. You know, you can understand them, you know, because they are absolutely horrible, abjectly horrific people. But their motivations, you know, you can have a villain without having the motivation be, ooh, I like to do bad things. No, you don't need that. Um, God, this is a lot to unpack. If I were to give this thing a score, I'd say definite. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a 10 of 10 for me. It was going, and then it took a completely different direction than I thought it was going to. I, it took a 180 from what I thought it was going to go to and went down a completely different path. And I'm glad, you know, for as a part of me is glad that his captain did not have to pass judgment on him. Because I'm not sure if, if his captain would have, if the warband leader would have allowed him to live or die. Uh... F in the comments for Svaka. This was outstanding. Um, I have nothing else. <laughs> so, all that being said, guys, 
Um, Vox and the Void puts out some great stuff. If you're not subscribed to him right now, subscribe to him for some great audio drama. Um, he not only does 40K, he's done some Star Wars. He's also read Shakespeare and the Death Star, apparently. Um, I checked out something of that. I know there's a whole bunch of stuff that he has, that he, you know, has. Um, God, I'm going to shut up. Uh, like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. There's a Discord down in below where you can ask for, like, requests. Check out what other people have requested and upvote your own. Uh, upvote theirs if you want to see that. Upvote your own. And if you'd like to support the channel, I have Patreon down below. And I can't figure out what I'm saying, so I hope you guys have a good night. And I'll see you guys next time.